RPD impression and auto cast technique. So today we will introduce you uh, the technique that you can use for the RPD impression. So uh, first of all, we have to talk about the custom or the individual tray. This is a requirement or the criteria you, when you deal with the individual tray or custom tray in the clinic. You will practice how to uh, fabricate the custom tray in the Synap 2. So at this you can see that uh, you will have a different thickness of a base plate wax, the pink wax, uh, one layer on the cast, edentrous area, and then two layer of uh, on the tubes. And then you will start to uh, make some tissue or two stop and use a triad with a Vaseline to finish the custom tray. Uh, I will now uh, spend a lot of time to describe how to use that and I will uh, introduce you with a video that in the scene lab. So why we need to use a custom tray to take a final impression? Because when we use a custom tray to take compression, the, the result will be more accurate than the stock tray. The textbook also mentioned that the use of individual tray should be considered a necessary step in making uh, the majority of removable partial dentures. So in the UDM dental clinic policy is that all the master cast final impression need to be taken with the custom tray. And all the custom tray should be approved by the faculty at least 24 hours before the final impression appointment. Be sure that you will have all the material you're going to use when the patient at the clinic. I just mentioned that the reason we use a custom tray is because there will be more accurate results. The one of the reason is because we can use that to do a boulder molding. So when we talk about a boulder molding of a removable partial dentures, actually that will be the same as you do a complete dentures. So the complete denture is a full edentalism and the partial denture is a partial edentalism. So when we treat the soft tissue boulder, actually the concept or the material will be the same. Our goal is to provide as broader the residual rich coverage as we can. Because when we provide a broad coverage, that the load can be distributed better. So we will more likely the denture base can cover as much of a residual rich as possible and should be extended to the maximum amount within the psychological tolerance of a limited boulder structures. And when we do a boulder mode, uh, we will use uh, the green compound, which you saw on the uh, pictures, and the hot water bath uh, to, uh, uh, to deal with these uh, steps. And if you are interested in uh, how to deal with that in the patient's mouth, that you can refer to a virtual process. They will have a one video uh, really show you how to do a boulder mode on the comprehensors, which you are also can use the same technique in a partial denture. However, in the removal partial dentures impressions, they have several different impression methods have been uh, introduced in this uh, field. The reason is because we are not, we are right now tr uh, try to deal with two different parts. One is about the tubes, one is about the soft tissue. So if we are treating uh, the two supported RPD, basically you can see that all the force actually will be uh, hold or supported by the tooth only. They will have no movements when we chew or dislodge uh, the RPD. 
So when you treat the candy class three or candy class four cases, which means that you are treated the two supported RPD, those residual root is not really provide the support. However, the most common uh, the RPD we uh, treated in the clinic is the tissue and two supported RPD, which means that that's a candy class one and candy class two cases. So it means it has distal extension, have a distal edentulous area, and those distal extension area will be support RPD. So like I said earlier, so when we treat the partial dentures, sometimes the force just be on the tooth. Sometimes the force will be on the tooth and to the tissue. So it's very hard for us to use a single way to take impression. And that's why they will have several uh, methods be introduced into the impression topic. When we look more thoroughly into the support of a distal extended RPD, you can find out those six factors will affect the support. The first is the contour and the quality of the residual ridge. The second is about your residual ridge coverage by the denture base. The third is related to your impression material and accuracy. The fourth is about how the fitness of the denture base to the ridge. The fifth will be how it's your design of the removable partial dental framework. And the sixth will be the occlusal load which patients uh, have in the mouth. So before we discuss further into the impression, I want to introduce you to uh, terminology here. So for you, you'll be more uh, easier to uh, understand what we're going to talk about later. So the first is anatomic form. The second will be function form. So when we talk about anatomic form, it means that the surface contour of a ridge is not supporting an occlusal load. Means that when we take the impression of anatomic form, the ridge is not have a loading, so it's not deformed. However, when we take a functional form, or some people call the physiological form. It means that the surface contour of a ridge is really support occlusal load. It means that those ridge form may be def uh, deformed by the loading. Let's use this uh, picture to give you a more thoroughly um, thinking process. So. When we deal with the distal extensions uh, RPD, it means that on the distal area, that's no teeth, that's an edentulous area. And the front, you have a teeth. So when we do a framework that we will put the clasp, the direct retainer, the rest, all the component onto the tooth to get retention and support. However, on the back, because that's an edentulous area, so there were no supported by the tubes. They will just have a support by the soft tissue. So you can divide it into two different parts when we treat the distal extension RPD cases. So the front will be more likely to treat it as anatomic form because all the force will go directly to the tubes. So there will be nothing uh, loading on the soft tissue. However, on the posterior edentulous area, they will be more likely to get a functional form. Because when we chew or eat the food on the posterior edentulous area, that ridge will be get the loading onto it. So right now it comes out two different impression technique. One the first one is anatomic form impression. So it means that we will use the one stage impression method with elastic impression material like PVS.
This will be just only recorded the hot and soft tissue at rest. Remember, we just talked about the anatomic form means that all the tissue is without the loading. So it means that the hot and soft tissue is at rest when you take this kind of anatomic impression. However, because of uh, this uh, impression recorded only when the hard and soft tissue is at rest. So when it really have a loading, they will get more masticatory loading onto the tooth and onto the soft tissue and onto the bone. And that's a reason why some people doesn't like this idea because they think they will give too much force even become a traumatic loading to the bone or to the tooth, which will cause the bone loss or the bone and tooth loosening. So eventually it comes out to the different uh, framework design, especially to talk about the stress breaker design for the distal bone and tooth, like I-bar or the raw wire, because those two uh, designs can really uh, prevent the stress go directly to the tooth. The second method is talk about the functional form method. So the function form method also be called the selective pressure or dynamic impression method. So when they have to do or what they try to do is that they try to record some area in the functional form and some area in the non-functional form. So which area really need to be in the functional form is the primary stress bearing area. And those non-stress bearing area that were recorded into anatomic form. So it means that you have to get a functional and anatomic form at the same time in a different area. And how can you get that? So you have to uh, control the material flow in the primary stress bearing area, which means that you have to minimize the amount of uh, relief over the area when you do a custom tray. So when you minimize the, the relief means that on those area that your tray will be more close to the ridge. So when you really use uh, the P, uh, elastic uh, impression material like PVI to take impression, that when you push it toward to the ridge, that material will really able to give some force or loading to the tissue. So when it's set on that area, you really record it with the form under the loading, which is what we call the functional form. So that can so this method can really give you the way to get the functional and anatomic form at the same time. So in the in the school in the UDM policies, actually we kind of like mix both way the both philosophy together. Because we want to get both um, philosophies benefit, so we ask you to take uh, impression with the custom tray. We ask you to use elastic impression material, which is the light or the medium uh, PBS. Also, we also ask you to try your best to use a stress breaker um, method to get the clasp. On the bum and tubes. So now we will talk about the auto cast technique. Remember, I said we want to get anatomic form and functional form at the same time in the first beginning. So some people comes out one question. So why we couldn't do it separately? Because think about that, when you do a functional form impression, then you have to really have a very good like individual tr a custom tray to do the impression. Also, you have to a really able to control 
to press on the posterior dentures area and try not to get too much force on the anterior because you want to record the anatomic form in the anterior. So why we couldn't just do it separately? Is there any way we can deal with that? That's why the AutoCAD concept comes out. So first of all, we took the first impression just by anatomic form with a custom tray concept. So you basically just uh, use PVS with the uh, custom tray and take the final impression. That will be your first anatomic form. And then you started to do a framework. When you do the framework, then you will do a framework try-in and be sure it was really able to fit with the tooth. And then you will start to do a tray. And in this time, we just do a tray on the dentures area. So you can see in this uh, uh, examples that this is a kind of class one modification one. So on the anterior modification, they are the two spawn because uh, they have adjacent tooths on each side. So we don't really necessary to do another impression on the two spawn area because that already be uh, taken when you do an, uh, the anatomic form technique. So we just need to deal with the distal retention area, which will be the functional form technique. So you make a partial custom tray on both sides. So you can see they put the wax on top of it and then they seat their uh, framework onto the wax and they put a triad on top of it and then take it out to remove the wax. Then they will have uh, both distal extensions uh, triad tray when they take uh, the final impression. Then you do the same thing when you uh, just like you do uh, the functional form technique. You do a boulder mode, you took final impression with a elastic material, which more likely is like a light body PVS in the clinic. After that, you have to section uh, your original uh, uh, cast and then pour out the posterior identitors part separately. So you can see on uh, the bottom pictures, they will have two different color of the cast, which will be means that the front one is the anatomic form, the posterior one is a functional form. And that will be the way you deal with to try to get the functional and uh, anatomic form at the same case. So that's the way you deal with by the AutoCast technique.